My name is Yu Ying Li. I'm here to describe a sequence of uh, courses in scientific computing. Um, so I'll start with CS370. Uh, this is basically an uh, introduction to how to solve uh, continuous mathematical problems using a finite precision computer. And we'll look at uh, the fundamental issues and the main algorithms or main methods for solving many interesting problems. So f for 370, uh, CS370, that's the first course. And we'll start with looking at the floating point number operations, floating, uh, floating point number representation. And the first topic, uh, first main topic of the course is about interpolations and splines, which is used in computer graphics. Uh, and we will, you will do a work assignment with handwriting, uh, plotting, and an example like that. And the second topic of the course is a numerical solution of a differential equation. And this is basically a simulation of dynamic system. And for this pro uh, subject, you'll be working with simulation of uh, the Angry Bird uh, <coughs> game, for example. Um, maybe some of you have spent many time working, uh, playing with it. Um, and the third topic is uh, Fourier transforms. Uh, it's for signal processing, for image processing, and well, you, you'll work with uh, application in JPEG uh, technology and MP3 or sound signal processing and things like that. And the final topic is uh, numerical linear algebra, which is actually the fundamental problem in, in numerical computation. And here you will look at a uh, uh, problem of uh, how to get the good ranking that uh, Google um, Google page rank, for example, how they computed their efficient ranking. All right, so this course is, um, a slight, is a, a slightly different from C371. 371 is uh, essentially having similar scope. The main difference between this course and C370 is that instead of looking at dynamic simulation, we will look at numerical integration as a topic, as a subtopic. And moreover, in general, this course uh, will be more mathematical theory focused rather than uh, CS370, which is more application focused. So in both uh, courses, though, you will be able to uh, get to really apply what you learn in interesting applications, as I have described. Okay. All right, so CS370 and CS371, oh, I already uh, described uh, the main difference is one is application oriented. So also CS370 is a required course for BMAS CS. Um, right, and uh, CS371 require a, uh, a higher mathematics, calculus three as a prerequisite. Uh, it's more math uh, theory oriented. Okay, so depend on what you are comfortable with, what you may be more appropriate. Uh, so both courses are uh, prerequisite or, or important for sequence of uh, other courses in computer graphics uh, and, uh, and in computer vision, uh, computational math course, and as I will describe, it's also important for CS473 uh, image processing course um, and a computational finance course that I will discuss subsequently as well, okay? Um, right, so, okay, so it, no question for these two courses? Okay, I'll move on to 473. Okay, so this is basically a course on the image, uh, on medical image processing uh, and signal processing. So in this course, you'll look at the medical images that come from different uh, instruments, uh, CT scan, M MRI, or PET scan, and uh, photographs. Uh, and you will look at the um, topic of how do I, how can I enhance imaging? For example, I may want to remove the noise that's present in an existing image, or maybe the image is uh, blurred. I can, I, I need to deblur uh, the image. Uh, image reg registration problem, you have images coming from different instruments, different uh, um, uh, apparatus. How can I align those images together to look at the common uh, components? Image segmentation, uh, it's very important for um, medical applications. So if you are, have a, a region in an image, you're suspicious of it could be a cancerous uh, nodule or something, you would want to have an automat automatic way of cut out those uh, area 
precisely in order to do your further analysis or diagnosis of whether it, it's a cancerous nodule or not, uh, depending on its characteristics. So that's the subject of image segmentation. So, so here are uh, some of those uh, sources of where the image can come from, as I would describe, could be PET scan, MRI, or just plain pho photograph. And Jeff told me that this, you can take a photograph of a, uh, slice of a dead body and then you might want to analyze them together by aligning them together. So this X-ray uh, image as well. So this is the example of uh, uh, image registration where essentially you can have an image from photo and MRI. You want to line up the region, line them together so you can analyze a region. Uh, so here you have aligned the photograph with MRI where this part comes from the photo. Okay. All right, segmentation, as I described, essentially you want to have an automatic way of uh, cut out a region uh, uh, by computer or, or segment out a, a particular region precisely, automatically, uh, and then you, then you can perform subsequent analysis to, dis to decide its medical uh, importance. Okay. All right, so that's 471. 473. Oh, sorry, this is still 473. Uh, so this, this course will require you like math. Uh, you're f quite familiar with calculus, linear algebra. Uh, and uh, you also use optimization uh, tools, so we need square problem, for example, Fourier transform. And most of those uh, computation, you will be, uh, be doing that in MATLAB. And this is a course offered by Professor Jeff Orchard. And um, right. Okay, 475, it's another uh, subsequent, cor subsequent course in scientific computing. It's a, it's a course that look at in more in depth and look at one particular subject, that's, that's the uh, linear algebra computation. And this linear algebra computation is an important uh, subject because it's the basis for all scientific computing techniques. Uh, and it, by itself, it also has many different applications. Uh, for example, uh, the Google page ranking involves essentially solving some kind of eigenvalue problem, linear algebra prob problem, image processing, uh, the blurring or noise removal could be all formulated as uh, some kind of linear equation uh, solve kind of problems. Um, so uh, in this course, basically, you will then have a chance to uh, get an in-depth look at, uh, in particular, solving uh, sparse large linear system equations, where sparse means the matrix A has a lot of zero entries, only a small percentage is non-zero. How do I solve this efficiently to be able to deal with real application problem? Data fitting problem means that this linear system may not be square. It could be overdetermined, more equations than unknowns. And look at eigenvalue problems, uh, solving the essentially trying to find x so that x equal to lambda x and lambda, find the lambda as well. So that's the eigenvalue problem. And that's related to, uh, for example, Google page ranking problem. It's related to that problem. And singular value decomposition, it's also a problem very important um, in uh, artificial intelligence and um, for where you want to rank uh, different features and things like that. So in this course, you'll look at those specific linear algebra problem, and you also look at different applications that arise by solving those problems. Huh, here's some e e example. Okay, so for example, you have a very noisy image here in the first one there. And in fact, uh, the denoising uh, process can be done by solving an appropriate AX equal to B, uh, the, the linear system equation problem. Uh, and typically, the matrix A can be sparse. Uh, image registration problem is solving a data feeding problem where you essentially you're trying to solve AX equal to B, but you measure the error in the least square sense. You look at the sum of the squares of each of individual um, equation, equations. Google page ranking, uh, essentially, as I mentioned, I uh, look at a, a, a graph that corresponds to how internet c c gets connected with, how web page connect each other in, in their, uh, their uh, reference. And then, then that problem can be converted into looking at essentially uh, a uh, computing of eigenvalue, uh, uh, an eigenvector problem, OK? You have a matrix corresponding to that graph, and that becomes a computation problem of really computing the largest eigenvectors. 
Okay, and uh, then as I also mentioned before, applications uh, uh, for SVD uh, could be document classification, uh, text retrieval, like I all just featured identification, important uh, ident uh, feature selection problem in general for um, uh, other application as well. All right, so that is for uh, 470. Five. Okay, here's coursework. So you so you have to you should have taken 370 or 371. You have to basic knowledge of linear algebra, MATLAB programming for assignments, and uh, usually midterm and final, I think. Uh, so well, next offering should be for 2012, and Justin usually offer this course. Sorry, I I didn't update that. Okay. All right, the final course is uh, CS476. It's uh, a basically um, financial computation course, computation in financial modeling. So the finance, financial market is increasingly enter uh, our um, conscious, our, uh, our discussion, uh, political discussion, economic discussion. For example, uh, in 2008, uh, after the market meltdown, in New York Times, there's, there's an article about is valid risk to blame for the market crash. Okay, so what is valid risk? It's just a way to measure the risk. So that's a, one question that is actually computationally intensive, that is involving our uh, computational method to, to evaluate that. Another question, important, suppose you have an option on to buy a RIM stock a year from now, but at today's price, that gives you some option, you have some, some option will have some value. What is the fair value of such a financial instrument? Um, okay, it turns out that there's mathematic theory behind it, and we can do the evaluation computing the fair value of a financial complex contract. Or if, you, if a bank sold such an option to, some, to a customer, he still has viability, how can he then manage his risk by performing uh, trading activities? So those are three questions that uh, it's very much of a uh, in people's uh, uh, conscience these days, looking at those uh, those issues, this is what what this course will will, will will be looking at is looking at the computational methods to answer those questions. What's the fair value of a complex derivative? What's a way to manage the risk for the bank? To they, they can do optimal uh, way of hedging. How do I measure the risk a bank is faced with by having all those uh, exposure by by selling all those uh, complex instruments? So those are the three basic tasks, basic computation task. In this course, you will learn numerical methods to answer those questions under some model assumptions. And you'll learn about Monte Carlo simulation methods for doing this risk measurement um, and evaluation. And you'll look at a tree lattice method for computing the value of a complex or, uh, instrument. And you also learn about, uh, in fact, look at this problem by solving differential equation as well. Okay. All right, so those are the main subjects. And so this course, uh, prerequisite is you have taken either 370 or 371. Um, you should have also taken stats 231 or, or 241. Um, that's the basic requirement. You don't have to know anything about finance or financial modeling or anything. That we will introduce everything that's, uh, uh, um, uh, that is required. Um, but you do also have to like mathematics. Um, okay. All right, this is one more slide. Yeah, okay, so basically this course um, has three assignments um, and uh, a final exam. And I think the next person to teach this is Peter Forsyth. He and I take turns to teach this course. And so if you're interested in this course, please look at the course website and uh, Peter's website. The next offering is uh, a winter term. <laughs>